distinguished guests, esteemed faculty and staff, proud families, most importantly, our remarkable honors students. Welcome to the 2024 new member induction ceremony and officer installation for the Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University's Honors Program. Yeah. As the professor for several Honors English courses, I am certain that I am speaking on behalf of all of our Honors faculty when I say that it is our privilege to contribute to, the developing, to developing such tremendous scholars and to be a part of this extraordinary honors community. The university's honors program is truly the jewel of the hill. I am, uh, to our inductees, uh, today's ceremony marks the beginning of a new chapter in your academic journey, one filled with rigorous, rigorous inquiry, innovative thinking, and a cadre of scholars who are, who are as committed as you are to learning. Remember that the pursuit of excellence is not a solitary endeavor. You are joining a prodigious community that will support and challenge you and who will celebrate your successes and help you navigate the inevitable hurdles that you will face as an honor student. Fully embrace this opportunity with enthusiasm and an open mind. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Isaiah Thompson, a four-year senior scholar who will provide a scholar's pr perspective. Let's give him a hand as he comes to the stage. Thank you for that introduction, Dr. Blackman. Again, I am Isaiah Thompson, a senior mechanical engineer, engineering major, hailing from the Gateway of the West, the 314, St. Louis, Missouri. And you might be thinking I'm up, I'm up here because I'm flawless. I had a fantastic four years, but that is just simply not the truth. I, I stumbled along the way, and I'm here to tell you that you will see your way through. Uh, beginning, I'm, to lay down this list and to keep myself on track, I am a certified yapper, so I need to make sure I stay on target. I'm going to make three points, my, my past, my present, and my future. So taking a step back to my past, both my parents are educators, so therefore, I knew from an early age that I was gonna have to pay for this thing named college. Fast forward to my senior year of high school, I knew that I, I was applying for scholarships uh, for seven to eight months and doing lots of interviews. And I came to the honors program interview with lots of vigor, I knew I was gonna crush it, but when I tell you that I sat at my computer screen for like 10 to 15 minutes just with a blank face like I knew I had failed. And something that would forever stick with me, my now mentor and brother, uh, Jarvis Pruitt, the recent past COO, um, or he, he served as the COO last year, and a recent grad, um, he told me, Mr. Thompson, who are you? And I was like, okay, I just started going over my resume once again. I'm like, I'm this, this. He's like, no, 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 no. We already know everything about your resume. Who is Isaiah Thompson outside of his resume? And what value does he bring to the table? I'm just like, Okay, isn't the honors program supposed to be adding value to me? Like, what's going on here? So I, I had to readjust, and this is the ways that I readjust. But I can definitely say, for, fast forward four years to my seat right now in the present. I can honestly, my analytical, dogmatic self can say the honors program has unequivocally changed the trajectory of my life for the positive. It has become the bedrock of my professional career. And I can 100% say that I love my HBCU not only because of the march in maroon and white, but also because of the honors program. And these are some things that shifted my perspective. One thing was my mindset. My mindset changed from what can I add to the pro honors program and not what it can give to me. You only understand and enjoy your community once you engage into it and when you become an active participant. Obviously, there's some give and take, but the tr you truly experience something once you invest into it. So come to the meetings, go to the program events, join organizations outside and inside of the college and serve and take advantage of everything that's presented in front of you. Personally, it, the honors program gave me a place where I could thrive. Meet people that have my same values, take classes with them, room with them, and, have, and give me a place to 
have an outlet for my leadership. One of my best things, one of my most pivotal moments in my life, honestly, was serving. And that's why I became the service coordinator for the honors program my sophomore year. It was one of the most humbling things that I've ever done. My favorite events was the St. Jude Manus House Botanical Garden. It also, the, the lessons and the wisdom that I got from Ms. Holloway and the now graduated honor scholars. These lessons of wisdom starting off with knowing that my resume was going to die in a couple months. So I had to get active on campus because second semester, your high school resume, I mean, it's cute, but like it doesn't really mean anything. You have to be able to become active on campus. One of the things that I did, I was looking around, I'm like a lot of these things are for sophomores and up. But I learned in honors first year experience that sometimes the target audience isn't necessarily what you apply for. You apply because you believe in yourself. So I applied around campus, and because of that, I got into a pitch competition. And I was able to get a free passport and a free trip to Colombia, like Bogota. And that was only because through the honors program. Also, my mentor that I got through the honors program, the man, the myth, the legend, Christian Reedus, he told me, Isaiah, you're lots of other things. But one thing he told me to do was apply for the Executive Leadership Council scholarship. I was able to get that scholarship and change my major. Another tidbit of wisdom that I got from the honors program to change your major early so you're not wasting three years, lots of time and money, change it early. Also, my major in me, my um, mechanical engineering major mentor, Jarvis, he uh, sat me down to do programmatic um, resume review and interviewing prep, which allowed me to get my first internship in California my first year and two times at Boeing. So this is all to say that the honors program does give you a silver platter to take advantage of these opportunities, but you have to be the one to pick up the fork and eat it. I ran my race. Now I'm handing the baton to you. So for the future, there's three letters that come to my mind. R-E-P. You've got to rep. You've got to represent. R stands for reputation. You are now part of this coveted family, the family that I'm a part of and hold near and dear to my heart. Your, your community back at home is a part of you, but now so is the honors program. You have to show up and carry yourself on campus in ways outside of just the normal. You are now part of the honors program. It is paramount that you keep the honors brand alive because you are now an extension of it. Education, y'all, y'all gotta go to class. I, I know, it's at eight o'clock, I get it. But you came here to get your education to get a job. So you have to go to class. But even when I'm a senior, right, we all get the same piece of paper. Make sure you're doing things outside of class because you want to have an employer hire you. That's the goal. Participation, come, come join the honors program. Come to meetings, join, the, join committees, bring up ideas. If you see gaps in the program, let us know and become a leader inside and outside. To start to wrap things up, people who lose, something that got me through my freshman year, lots of change, was people who lose their why tend to lose their way. People who lose their why tend to lose their way. So yes, I changed my major, but my why never changed. I want to invest into my community long term, and I want to give, and I want to change the environment and save it. That's never changed, only my major did. Now, to be honest, so be honest amongst yourselves, turn, find a partner, Tell, tell someone another what your why is. Why you're here? Were you volunteered to be here? Or are you, why are you really at A&M? Like, why did you choose the major? Go amongst yourselves and talk so you know why you're here and you have a little bit of accountability. Go ahead. Take like 30 seconds. Be honest. Be honest. True, true, true. That's right, that's right. All right. Oh. Um, so I want to end off. I want to, yeah. I want to end off on one more quote. A major difference between the haves and the have nots, a major one, not the only, a major difference between the haves and the have nots is that the haves, they do. And the have-nots, they do not. So imagine right here is your key to success. Everything that you would want inside of the honors program, outside your career, your professional career, this is everything. Who would want this type of key? That's true. All right, let's listen to this again. The haves, they do. And the have-nots, they do not. So if you really wanted this key, 
what would you have to do? Okay, so, so, <laughs> so as Jared did, you have to want things more. You have to have it, you have to want things and you have to go get it. You have to do things and you have to want. So I want to end off on this. You have to REP represent your reputation, your education, and your participation within the honors program. And make sure you never, make sure you always, always do because nobody else will do it for you. Okay. Good job, Mr. Thompson. Uh, I don't know you yet, but I hate that I have to follow you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, oh, yeah, right, I ain't give y'all a chance, so let's run it back. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. All right. I bring you greetings on behalf of Dr. Rosetta Howard, Interim Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs, uh, who regrets that she was unable to attend today. My name is Aaron Dixon, and I serve as the Executive Director for the Freshman Academy here at Alabama a and it is with immense pride and joy that I welcome you to this new candidate induction ceremony for the renowned Alabama a and University Honors Program. To today's inductees, we gather to celebrate not only your histor history of academic and leadership excellence, but also the qualities of perseverance, curiosity, and integrity that have brought you to this moment. Admission into this program is highly competitive, so be proud to be here today. I urge you to take full advantage of this remarkable opportunity to engage with challenging ideas, collaborate with like-minded peers, and actively contribute to this vibrant academic community. Congratulations to each of you on reaching this significant milestone. We're incredibly, incredibly proud of you, of your accomplishments, and are excited to see the contributions you will make to this institution in the future. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am Carla Draper Holloway. I serve as the assistant director to the honors program. Uh, this is my 22nd year on the Hill. So 18, 18 of my years have been spent here in the university honors program. When I started in 2006, I was handed a list of 13 students who were in the honors program. The program had uh, been defunct for a few years uh, when the previous director um, got ill, and I was told to come to the honors program um, for a few months to see what I can do. Well, on this day, look around and let's see what we did. So this is the 31st year of honors. Uh, since 1993, it has been the mission of the Alabama A&M University Honors Program to recruit and retain academically talented students and develop them into extraordinary citizens uh, who go on to achieve successful careers and impact their environment through exemplary leadership and service. The program provides professional development, uh, seminars, internships, social and service activities, and other opportunities for creativity and experiential learning. I want to thank everyone for being here today. Um, I also want to thank our honors faculty and honors faculty liaisons uh, for being a part of today's processional. The honors faculty are a big part of what we do in the honors program. Uh, so thank you to our honors faculty lead, Dr. Blackman, who at this point is our most seasoned um, honors faculty member, uh, who teaches, um, when I say seasoned, he's been doing it the longest. So he teaches um, honors English uh, 101 and 102. How many of you guys are in his course or have had Dr. Blackman? Lucky you. We also um, have today uh, Dr. Bowser, um, who is new on board teaching honors history. Thank you so much, Dr. Bowser. 
We have Professor Hampton. Uh, this is our, her second time teaching honors biology. Thank you so much, Professor Hampton. Dr. Tiemann, who will be teaching honors art appreciation here today, thank you so much. And Dr. Uh, Judith Hayes, who is here today to, who teaches honors world literature this year as well. Dr. Price and Dr. Pham couldn't be here, but they teach um, honors chemistry and honors calculus respectively. Our honors faculty liaisons are new this year. Um, Professor Wessels is actually not new. She's always kind of supported the program. I have recruited her for several things. And so I figured we would make it official. Um, and so she will be on board with us supporting our initiatives and helping uh, find opportunities along with Mr. Jared Vines, who couldn't be here today, who will be helping with our STEM opportunities, who was also, he's in the back, y'all wave at him, who was also an honors faculty liaison. So this is a rock solid community that you are becoming a part of. It has been my honor for 18 years to do what I do. I count it as a divine assignment from the God that I serve. And I am thankful each day um, for the students that have been assigned to me that I'm able to pour into. Um, but I also learned so much from these students. These are the most brilliant students that I've ever known. And just when I think we've reached the height of brilliance, here comes Simone. And this year, we have 147 new inductees. This is our largest class ever. Uh, this year also brought um, the highest number of applications, um, almost about 400. And so we took our time in this process. Uh, we discussed, we interviewed, we prayed, because we wanted to make sure that we selected the best students who could be a part of this community, because we understand how impactful this program can be. And we're hopeful that we have chosen the best of the best to be a part of the best of the best of that best. Of that best. That's what we do right here. Our program has three core values. Our first core value is? Scholarship. With scholarship, we create an educational climate that stimulates all students to perform to their highest intellectual capacity. Our second core value is leadership. We seek to cultivate trendsetters, trailblazers, who go on to lead lives and impact their environment with excellence. Our last core value, Service. we understand and we stress the importance of responsible citizenship through civic engagement. An honors program or college is designed to ensure that the most academically talented students are challenged to achieve at their highest potential as individuals while preparing for their responsibilities to the community. Because you see, we have a responsibility. And it's the ultimate goal that we provide opportunities and open doors and access and initiatives so that each student can become the best and highest version of themselves so they can, they can go on to be whomever they believe the creator has told them to be. And again, it has been my honor. Before we formally induct our scholars, I will install our new executive officers for this academic year. The officers here in the program, they are an extension of me, because it's just the me. And so these students really get real time, hardcore development. So by the time they leave from this experience with the work that they got to do, um, they are ready to run your corporations. They are ready for the world. It's nothing they can't do after they do this here. So at this time, I will formally install these officers for the 2024-2025 academic year. 16 students have been elected or appointed to serve on the 2024-2025 Honors Executive Council. They are Executive President Jemiah Cathy, Executive Vice President Terry Dukes, 
Executive Chief of Operations, Riley Roberts. Secretary, Cynthia Bradley. Treasurer, Amarachi Ezekiel. Parliamentarian, Jamarian Wilson. Service Coordinators, Alan Hollingsworth and Olivia Mallard. New Member Representatives, Jared Davis and Lydia Kinnamer. Historian, Kadriana Heath. Public Relations Liaisons, Zia George and Eugenia Justin. Sorry, guys. Wrong page. Cultural Events Coordinator, Isaiah Thompson. Miss Honors Program, Maya Reeves. And ex officio officer, Christopher Johnson. With your, with your right hand raised, will you, as newly elected officers, realizing the responsibilities of leadership? that have been placed upon you, agree to give of your time and energy to faithfully serve the Alabama A&M University Honors Program? If so, please answer, we will. We will. And do you solemnly pledge to uphold the duties of your position as specified in the Honors Program Constitution? Say we do. We do. And finally, do you pledge to model strength of character, commitment, and the program's core values of scholarship, leadership, and service? If so, answer, we do. we do. Then by the authority vested in me through the university administration, I do hereby install you as the new executive board for the 2024-2025 school year with all the rights and privileges thereby. You may now take your positions on the dais. I will now turn the candle lighting ceremony over to the Honors Program Executive President and the Executive Council. You may be seated. Scholarship, leadership, and service embody the program's commitment to excellence. The candle lighting ceremony will describe each of these principles. A man's mind, once stretched by a new idea, never regains its original dimensions. Once one's mind has been expanded, a new perspective is gained. It is the goal of honor scholars to continually seek new knowledge opening new horizons. Scholarship is the advancement, application, and integration of said knowledge. A strong scholar is able to apply this knowledge and is marked by a sharp focus and even has academic poise, persistence, and of course, passion. If your actions inspires others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Leadership is the ability of an individual to influence, motivate, and enable others to contribute towards the effectiveness and the success of organizations of which they are members. Leadership is an attitude that influences the environment around us. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Community service is giving back, but also gaining an understanding about each other 
and a sense of human compassion. True scholars are committed to building and strengthening our community. After all, a community is what makes us stronger and allows us to grow. Excellence in scholarship, leadership, service, illuminate the, the path of achievement. Inductees, please stand. Will the designated torchlighters come forward to ignite your candle from the flame of achievement as directed by the escorts? Please remain standing. Participation in the Alabama A&M University Honors Program is composed of undergraduate students who have declared an interest in scholarly endeavors in academic, professional, and leadership excellence. The lighting of your candle demonstrates your commitment to our revered principles. As newly inducted scholars into the Alabama A&M University Honors Program, do you accept the challenge to maintain the high academic and leadership standards set forth by the program and to serve as examples for the achievement of excellence around the world? If so, please answer, I do. I do. And do you promise to work toward the achievement of the purposes and goals as set by the National Collegiate Honors Council? Okay. Executive officers, please stand. Please join us in the honors, reciting of the honors program pledge. I pledge to strive for excellence. Scholarship will pave the way. I endeavor to uphold council's legacy with the torch of wisdom as my beacon every day. I will blaze a trail of leadership for those who will come behind. I vow to serve humanity with honor, lifting others as I climb. At this time, we'll have our litany of success by honor sophomore scholar, Miracle Olatanji, representing the honors program, Speech and Debate Society. Let us be. Let us be. Let us be. A light. No, let us be a torch, one that beams, resolute, unyielding. In your hand, you hold a torch, a torch representing excellence. So let it shine. Let us shine bright, because it is in fact our light and not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? Let us be. Let us be bold, bold in our calling, sure in our task, undaunted in our integrity. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. Let us be. Let us be set apart. Let us be distinguished. For we were not designed to fit in, not proposed to go with the flow but crafted 
to be an example for others to follow. We lead, they follow. What do we embody? We embody scholarship. Because we have always, always set the pace in our studies, always set the standard in every opportunity. What do we exemplify? Because we are the answer. Because our greatness propels us forward. Our ideas and compassions provide fuel for the solutions and inventions needed to solve the multifaceted problems that plague our world. What do we champion? We champion for we are guided by our responsibility to make the world better, way better than we found it. What are we? We are one. One family, one community, one body. Because the weight of our talents and potential and girth of expectation can be heavy. Let us be a shoulder for one another as we triumph over every obstacle and are refined by our adversities. For we are the standard. We are the standard. We are the standard. Thank you. Inductees, you may now pin the scholar next to you on the left lapel. On behalf of the university administration, honors program faculty, and program staff, it is my highest honor to welcome you into the honors program family of scholars. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the newly inducted members of the Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University Honors Program for the 2024-2025 academic year. Please join me in welcoming these new members. The candles representing scholarship, leadership, and service will continue to burn throughout the duration of this program. Inductees, you may now extinguish your lights. You may be seated. We will now follow the program as printed. Executive officers, you may be seated. Greetings. My name is Uchina Justin, and I'm a sophomore computer science major from a great nation, Nigeria. <laughs> it is my honor to introduce today's illustrious induction speaker. Dr. Tiana Hall, a native of Birmingham, Alabama, has a long history of excellence. She was the valedictorian of Huffman High School's class of 2010 and proud graduate of Alabama A&M University in the honors graduating class of 2014. She received her Bachelor's of Science degree in biology. Dr. Hall was afforded numerous scholarships during her tenure here at Alabama A&M University, where she flourished in and outside the classroom. Not only was she an active participant in the university's distinguished honors program, but she was also a part of the Alima Dance Company and was a standout dancer in the Marching Maroon and White Dancing Divas Auxiliary Team. Dr. Hall also benefited from the close partnership the honors program had with the Thurgood Marshall College Fund. In her junior year, she was selected to be a campus and TMCF ambassador for the Centers for Disease Control and traveled to New York City for the TMCF's premier leadership institute. Following her undergraduate tenure, Dr. Hall returned home to Birmingham to pursue a master's degree in public health from the University of Alabama at Birmingham while working part-time in retail and volunteering in the science lab of a cherished mentor. In 2017, Dr. Hall began working as the research coordinator for Growing King's mentorship program, where she was able to secure grant funding to support programming geared towards at-risk black male students. The work of Growing King spurred her passion towards public health and advocacy to the underserved. She is very proud of this work. The year 2017 continued as the year of manifested dreams for Dr. Hall. She was able to realize a lifelong dream of becoming a member of the Delta Sigma Theater Sorority Incorporated by way of Birmingham Alumni Chapter. To complete her year of realized ambitions, she received admission to the Edward Via College of Osteopathic Medicine at Auburn. While enrolled, Dr. Hall continued to sharpen her leadership skills by serving as the campus ambassador and secretary for the Student National Medical Association, Auburn campus. She was also privileged to be a Blue Cross Blue Shield scholar. In May 2021, she received her doctoral degree in osteopathic medicine. Dr. Hall recently completed family medicine residency at St. Vincent's East Christ Center, where she served not just as a resident, but as the chief resident. She currently works as a board certified family medicine physician in Gardenale, Alabama. Dr. Hall counts herself as blessed, not just for her accomplishments, but for having two active parents who continue to impart wisdom and support and for a husband who challenges her to be her best self. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Honors Class of 2014 alum, Dr. Tiana Hall. Greetings. 
to the Alabama A&M faculty and staff, the honors program leadership, honors program members and new inductees, as you've heard. I'm Dr. Tiana Hall. Um, I'm just so proud to be here. I'm currently practicing as a board certified family medicine physician and of course a proud graduate of Alabama A&M class of 2014. What an honor it is to be here with you today as you are inducted into the honors program. I share in your joy as you embark upon an excellency, community service, and academic excellence. This program and our beloved university continues to produce numerous community leaders and innovators who leave lasting impressions in the world. Please know that you will be next. If I may, I'd like to share a portion of my story with the hopes of impressing upon you the privilege of such membership. I was highly involved, as you'd heard, in high school, very competitive, and I wanted that same environment in college. Even back in 2010, my freshman year, the honors program was a sacred space that not every student on campus had the ability to be a part of. So at the end of my freshman year, I decided to spread my wings a little and apply to several on-campus organizations, one of course being the honors program, and it hands down was one of the best decisions that I made. Being part of the honors program offered me invaluable educational experience and leadership training that has informed the professional that I am today. In fact, myself and several other classmates, as you've heard, had the chance to interview with the Thurgood Marshall College Fund to attend their annual Leadership Institute in New York City. To date, that was the hardest interview I participated in. The panel of two or three interviewers asked many questions of me, but there's one question that still sticks with me till this day. That question was, what is your brand? I honestly had no response for that question, even though I had perfected that elevator pitch Mrs. Holloway made us craft. Truth be told, I was different from my peers. They were seeking the big fortune 500 company internships while I had no desire to pursue business. My brand was truthfully that I wanted to be a physician and I wanted to serve the least of these. I left the interview feeling very defeated, incredibly defeated. There was no way that I would get that call back and be chosen to participate after that performance. But for such a time as this, from that interview, not only was I able to attend the Institute, but I gained the CDC ambassadorship, scholarship money, and an opportunity to shadow scientists at the CDC, all from one really uncomfortable interview. You see, Mrs. Holloway knew my career goals the entire time, yet she still pushed my shy self to show up boldly to the interview. Thank you again. From my example, I hope you see and two, one day experience the importance of preparation and boldness, things that the honors program impressed upon me in order to get me out of my comfort zone. Allow me to share another truth with you as it pertains to the big impact that the honors program has had on my life. As you've heard, I've had the passion of becoming a physician for quite some time, and I think it's a purpose that God did place within me. And if you also know that becoming a physician means that you have to pass the medical school acceptance test, also known as the MCAT. The day I received my MCAT results was the day of my annual interview with Mrs. Holloway. It was horrible. I did not pass the test. I was devastated, yet I still needed to show up well for that meeting. Mrs. Holloway knew immediately that my spirit was off kilter. I fell apart, explaining to her that I had no backup plan, and this happened the fall of my senior year. All I wanted to do was to go to medical school to pursue an MDMPH. She let me cry, but only for a moment. Then she immediately sprang into action to develop a new plan with the same end goal to make me a physician. For that, I'm thankful. I can never repay you. This experience literally embodies what being a member of the honors program means. It gave me a strong pillar of support away from home. It provided me with an advisor who was truly invested in my success and my future. 
It gave me unimaginable experience to different careers in science, and the membership gave me camaraderie with other high-achieving scholars. Present day, God made good on his promise to me and the hope that the honors program continued to light within me. I get to practice family medicine in my family's home community of Gardendale, Alabama. Every day I truly get to serve the least of them, the mourning, the sick, the poor in spirit. Glory be to God. I know that you too can and will achieve those lofty and seemingly impossible goals. The honors program is a great launching pad to do so. Please allow the experiences to sharpen you. So today, I challenge you all to hold fast to those lessons that, that will be offered to you this academic year. The lessons in professionalism, communication, professional dress, and community service. Take your advanced studies seriously. They will prepare you well. Yes, you'll stand out, but that's the best part. For you are the light of the world. A town on a hill cannot be hidden. As you begin your work with the program, participate, be curious, and be coachable. Maintain a sense of curiosity about the world around you. Ask critical and intelligent questions, but don't stop there. Be innovative enough to create the solutions that your campus needs and that your community and the world need. We are really depending on you scholars. We really are. And I'll leave you with this poem. It's one that has encouraged me, and I hope that it also encourages you. It's by Edgar Albert Guest. Somebody said, it couldn't be done, but he with a chuckle replied, then maybe it couldn't, but he would be one who wouldn't say so till he tried. So he buckled right in with a trace of a grin on his face. If he worried, he hid it. He started to sing as he tackled the thing that could not be done, and he did it. Somebody scoffed, oh, you'll never do that. At least no one has ever done it. But he took off his coat and he took off his hat and the first thing we knew, he'd begun it. With the lift of his chin and a bit of a grin, without any doubting or quitted, he started to sing as he tackled the thing that could not be done and he did it. There are thousands to tell you it cannot be done. There are thousands to prophecy failure. There are thousands to point out to you one by one the dangers that wait to assail you. But just buckle in with a bit of a grin. Just take off your coat and go to it. Just start to sing as you tackle the thing that could not be done, and you'll do it. Congratulations, scholars. On behalf of the Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University Honors Program, I would like to thank Dr. Tiana Hall for coming to address us today. I know that her journey and words of inspiration will remain with us as long, long after this program. Dr. Hall, will you come forward? Thank you for imparting into the Honors Program and thank you for your willingness to participate in our initiatives throughout the year. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You did amazing. That was amazing. Thank you so much for coming today. One of the things, um, you know, God has been good to me. Uh, one of the things that um, he has given me, I didn't ask for it, um, sometimes it's not always a good thing, um, is that he's given me great discernment and vision. And sometimes when I meet a scholar, meet a student, I can immediately see the end from the beginning. The frustration in what I do is that sometimes I don't get a chance to see that ending. Sometimes it didn't happen, it didn't manifest, or it's delayed. So it is just my honor, um, I'm not gonna cry, because I'm a G, but it has been, it's an honor uh, to see the end, like I saw it when I first met Tiana um, in her sophomore year. Um, I knew that despite what it looked like, um, that she would get there, because I saw it from the beginning. So thank you for being here, and thank you for uh, answering the call every time I ask you to do something. Uh, Dr. Hall has uh, come back to the Hill and uh, poured into students. Um, as a matter of fact, she shared when you first got, do you remember the Game Changer series you did? Um, when you first uh, started school, 
I asked her to come and I was happy that she was able to do it to share her experience because everyone's journey isn't the same. And the destination is possible, but the journey may look different for you and it's by design. Um, but I wanted her to share her story and uh, the program that she was a part of was relatively new, especially for students had not heard much about it. And from the session you did, three of those students are now in that program. Yeah, Rebecca and Rachel Decay and Alicia just finished last year. Um, and they would not have known about that program had it not been for you. And so I love when my students uh, come back and, and can pour in. And so, um, and she's also helped with our mock interviews and with our Zoom sessions about how to prepare for that journey. Um, and she's not alone. And so I have a, we have a great strong community of uh, alumni scholars who give back with opportunities, with scholarships, with sponsoring students. Um, and so uh, this is just a very good community to be a part of. And so to the 147 inductees, 93 freshmen, 54 sophomores, you got next. And so I look forward to engaging with you, getting to know you guys, um, and being a part of helping um, you know, your professors, helping your departments, helping you to achieve and be all that you can be here at the university. Thank you. All righty. So thank you all for being here, all guests. At this time, I declare this honors induction ceremony closed. Love that.